Yeah, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy Black Trey from Your Gaming, Your Network, bring you another one, man. You're... What's good, y'all? So we here. We back, man. So listen, we got some breaking news. You feel what I'm saying? I meant to do a video yesterday. Um, just didn't get around to it, but we here now. Square Enix reveals where Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will end. So that's, that's the main topic of the video, but first off we got some things to get into all right so final fantasy 7 rebirth will feature 100 hours of content um square enix reveals where part two would end on top of that so in the wake of revealing a new trailer and release date uh which we got what's that february 29th 2024 so we are super hyped for that we love that release date um we wish it could have been a little bit sooner but you know what it gives us some time um, I still need a platinum. I have like two trophies that I need to get. Actually, I, need, I got one trophy I need to get in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is just the dresses. Um, so, you know, it's a slog, which I'm not really the biggest fan of going back and doing it because I technically got to go back and, you know, do like a couple chapters. But it's besides the point. It is what it is. So during today's state of play, which was yesterday, Square Enix has revealed much more information about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, confirming that the anticipated follow-up to Final Fantasy VII Remake will feature a hefty 100 hours of gameplay. Producer Yoshinori Katase wrote a letter to fans on the game's social media pages to promise a vast world map, among a host of other details. Now, what, what, I, what I will say to this is that Final Fantasy VII Remake, man, Midgar was probably the most hated part of the game for anybody who's ever played it. I mean, if anybody tells you that they love Midgar, question whether they actually, um, you know, really liked Final Fantasy VII like that or if they're just trolling like, oh, they're trying to be down. Because the game opens up so much more once you leave Midgar. So it's just like, if you ever replayed it, you're like, I want to get out of here just so I can go do all the other stuff that you can actually do in the world. So I don't know about that. Like, Midgar did have some decent parts, but... Yeah, nah, man, I'm not rolling with that. Um, he also teased that he also teased what is arguably the original's most famous moment, hinting at fans are dying to see one particular scene. I'm assuming that's probably spoiler, spoiler alert. Anybody uh, who hasn't played the original, so I'm assuming that's uh, the Nibelheim with um, the Nibelheim. Um, it's like a past memory when they're recapping it, and you 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 see Sephiroth, but I think. The reason why he's saying that because it's looking like Sephiroth may be a playable character um, in this uh, upcoming game. So that's actually going to be pretty dope. Um, so let's get into this article. So it says today, um, celebrate today's announcement. We're sharing uh, messages from the development team behind Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, starting with producer Yo Shinari Katase. So he says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has been set for release on February 29, 2024. The second installment of Final Fantasy VII Remake project will feature elements from the previous game as well as greatly enhanced features such as a vast open world to explore and synergy abilities with party members. So that's actually pretty cool because like you you have like um like similar like Chrono Trigger where you have like the two people attacks. But what I'm thinking they're probably gonna end up doing they're probably gonna have a three team attack too because they're gonna they're adding skill trees which is actually pretty cool. Your story will unfold more dramatically than ever before with a rapid rapid pace of of major twists and turns. We know fans are dying to see one scene in particular. Final Fantasy VII Remake can be enjoyed on its own as a standalone adventure with the party leaving Midgar to explore a wide open world beyond. But for those wishing to deepen their understanding of the story, a recap of the previous game will also be provided. We hope that both fans and those who have never played Final Fantasy before will enjoy this game. That's the producer. So director Naoki Hamaguchi also weighed in to call the project a labor of love. While saying that the follow-up embraces free exploration, which we that's what the first one desperately needed. That's the only thing that held it back, man. He also said it will feature compelling stories, fun mini-games, and so much more. So what I'm hearing with the mini-games, I'm hearing that, yo, it's like double the size of like the, the story. So it's just like, 
So I'm assuming if they're saying 100 hours, so I'm figuring probably the regular story is probably going to be like, if you rush through it, maybe like 30 hours. Because if they're saying like double that, it's probably going to be like, you know, like a good like 40 or 50 hours that you can just get out of side content. And if you know the original games, you know how they had like the, the boxing joint, they had the, the snowboarding, they had um, the bike, they had a lot of different games. Uh, in the trailers, you see chocobos and all that. You see the blue one flying and the black one climbing mountains. Like, yeah, it was actually pretty dope. Um, da -da -da. some mini games. The trailer, um, shown during the state of play, showed off the gold saucer with a mini boxing game, featuring the original game's familiar style. Like, yeah, I remember that. Um, let's see. Finally, director Tetsu Tetsuya Nomura said that many elements were carefully selected for this title, and that it will incorporate feedback from 2020's Final Fantasy VII remake. He also teased some potential changes from the original game well we already seen that because you know with the whispers and all that stuff um it definitely changed and chapter 18 was a complete change from you know the original game plus you know what i mean all the things that you were going through where it was like the you know, whispers were like changing things and making sure things happened in a certain way um there's no there's also looming questions about of what fate awaits uh, Namor wrote, whether you have experienced the original title or will embark on this adventure with fresh eyes, we hope you will face the ending of this work on your terms. So, I mean, is that saying that it's more open-ended and you have a choice to make? Which, actually, if they're going to have a third game, I mean, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be bad to give like players like a couple different options just in terms of what you want to do. Like, I, I'm assuming that's probably what they're going to do because if you play the OG, you already know like how the storyline goes, but I'm assuming because this is saying that, all right, well, let's get to that. Square Enix reveals where Final Fantasy Rebirth will end because I was about to get, get right into this because I'm just like, where do you think it will end? Because up front, initially what I said, all right, for this game, I think to be good, it would have been, um, I thought, a good place to end about like maybe like the crater and like so or like where, where Meteor gets announced. Um, and I would say the reason why is because at that point, I can see them making a game where you have to, you know, go to like different places to um, like break the meteor and get in there and then go down into the cavern and, and you know, going into the cavern to face the fear of would be the last like thing to do. But that's if it like um, went with the original game but well, they're changing the story up so i don't know if um i mean i think sephiroth is going to be ultimately the the last guy but they seem to be switching it out and it's saying like two worlds convergence so it's going to be something with that uh, so let's see so let's see where they say the game's going to end so elsewhere a lengthy playstation blog entry dove into the upcoming follow-up confirming in the process that it will extend up to the forbidden forgotten capital though some scenes will take place out of order what happens in the forgotten capital uh final fantasy 7 fans know the scene very well that we do which i won't go into spoilers for anybody who hasn't played the game i'm just not going to put it in here but we all know you know, that was like a devastating moment for us. So how Rebirth will tackle this famous scene is one of the biggest questions, as Remake has shown every inclination to going off the rails. Yeah, it seems like they're changing the story, so I can't say for a fact that that's what's going to be there. I don't know. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm welcome to see what the changes are because it seems like things are different. So we'll see if they, you know, how, how similar it's going to be to that. Uh, in a blog, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth's uh, development team came together to elaborate on what was shown in the new trailer while offering even more details. The interview uh, includes discussions on Red 13, who will be making his debut in Rebirth, so it also, uh, as well as Kate Sith and Vincent. Um, I didn't see anything about Sid, and if they're going all the way up to the Forgotten Capital, they should have uh, Sid at that point, which he wasn't in the trailer at all. So that sort of like has me like, is he going to... They better not play my man Sid, because he... Even though, like, um, in the game, he wasn't one of my favorite characters, like, to, to use in a party, but he was, like, one of my favorite characters to have in the party, to, like, for his banter and just, like, his overall, like, attitude. Like, he was one of my favorite characters. You know what I mean? Cloud's hand down. Cloud, hands down. You already know what it is. Um, and then, you know, there's just a little bit more, uh, not to go off on a tangent, but let's just see. It says, uh, whether you have experienced the original title or will embark on this adventure with fresh eyes, we hope you'll face uh, the ending of this work on your own terms. The original party members are all present. Um, 
in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Nomura said. In the previous title, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Red XIII be became an accompanying member in the second half of the game, but he will become an uh, official playable party member uh, starting at the beginning. Similarly, there are characters who are accompanying Final, Final Fantasy member and so you basically you're gonna have guest party members pretty much what it's saying it is currently unclear whether kate sith and vincent uh the letter of whom a seeking character in the original game will be playable in a new release um from the trailer it looks like kate sith will be playable because he he does like a, a synergy move i think it was with yuffie or eris one of them i think it was with eris if i'm not mistaken i just don't have the um I just don't have it playing in front of me to say for sure. But what I will do, I'll have the um, the trailer in the background. So you guys will probably be seeing it as this is going on. Um, talking about numerous mini games and a Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Hamaguchi confirmed that the team plans to expand on the parade game um, featuring Junon. So that's cool. Uh, he also said that the great, you know, man, well, the parade game, I mean, it was so quick. If they turn it into like a freaking one or two hour thing, I'm going to be kind of mad because I'm just like, all right, I don't want to do no parade, man. Hopefully there's a way to skip that um but i think they, they're trying to just expand and give you a lot more material which you, you more is more but sometimes depending on how good it is sometimes less is more you feel what i'm saying uh he also said that square enix has gone all out and created a huge number of mini games on a scale that surpasses even the original yeah because you know what i did see cloud riding on like a scooter thing so i'm sure there's going to be a whole bunch of different things in there but if that's Honestly and truly, if that's what's holding the progress up because you add adding all this ancillary stuff in there, I would prefer that you just give me, like, a great content. Focus on the story and making the combat and the story, like, number one. Like, make that pristine. Make that 10 out of 10. And then the side content, because the side content is cool, but, you know what I mean, who goes into a game like, oh, man, you know, the number one thing I want to do is just do the side content. It's very rare that you find something that you'll find. Like, there's certain games, especially in Final Fantasy, like card games or something like that, where it's like, all right, you experience it, and it's like, yeah, you know what? That card game is actually pretty cool. Like, the card game in Final Fantasy VIII was actually pretty cool. I really like that joint. Um, but, you know, they may be doing too much. So I'm just hoping that they don't do too, too much. Um, but it's still pretty cool. Let's see if there's anything else here. So Hamaguchi claimed that Final Fantasy Rebirth will feature double the amount of side content compared to the original game and that players will be able to return to any regions in the world after the main quest moves on from that area, which is really good. So you can like just explore and travel because most people, I think, um, if they're saying this is about 100 hours worth of content, I'm sure that I'll have like probably like 500 to like maybe 1,000. So I'll be doing like builds. I'll be doing like my favorite team ups. Um, you know, character builds, etc. When the, when this game comes out, you know, Final Fantasy VII is my favorite game of all time. So I guess you know, getting to the part of the game where it's actually like was my favorite part, like after you leave Midgar, I'm really hype about that. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, each region would also feature its own type of chocobo, though Hamaguchi didn't elaborate on whether the chocobo breeding mini game will return in this version. I mean. That was kind of annoying because it was like a whole process but you know what i mean that'd be pretty cool if you got like if you can like um at least house them so it's like all right well you know i got a blue chocobo a green one and getting the gold chocobo it's like i'm sure that'd probably be like a platinum um that'd probably be like um like a major um trophy yeah that'd be probably dope uh, but there's one caveat final fantasy 7 rebirth will not let you carry over your save file so it's gonna be brand new so it's going to be like, like you know what I mean? Like, you can't bring over that Gata Dam around. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because that would just be a straight cheese if you got your limit break before every fight. Because that's what we were assuming that they were going to do. Um, all they would have to do, though, honestly, is just, if they weren't going to do that, I would say bring back the, um, bring, like, like, I would say let you end so you can, like, bring over your material and stuff like that. But what I would say is probably just get rid of the broken items somehow you feel what i'm saying like just get rid of that like everything because you don't need that you all you just like um you know you can't use it until the end of the game or something like that you know what i mean just to make it you know more fast feasible but you know what I, i'm sure they're gonna do something with it um 
and not to draw out this video too much longer um we'll just finish up um we have announced that final fantasy 7 remake project will be a trilogy and that e each entry is a standalone game in its own right uh, hamaguchi said because of this each game is balanced and is done independently and a player's level and abilities will not carry over from one game to the next however we have created some special bonuses for fans who have played the previous games allowing them to start with a little something extra so you know they're gonna add a little bit here or there you know what do you guys think? So the release date February twenty ninth. You guys excited for that? Um, I'm gonna I may do a video on the um, on the deluxe edition, which is actually I don't I didn't even see a date on when that would be dropping, but the price tag on that is pretty hefty. But if you guys are interested in that, maybe leave a comment. Let me know, um, and I'll get into it because it had a, a decent amount of stuff that was involved in it, but for the price tag that they want to put on it. I don't know if that's something that I would really be ready to invest in, but there is one aspect that I'm definitely um, interested in, but it's just a matter of that price tag. Um, if it was maybe like cut in half, I definitely would be more interested, but I'm just trying to figure out if I'm trying to invest that meant that much funds um, because it's it's a heavy tag. And you know what I mean? I think that I could put my money elsewhere to get uh, more value out of gaming, you know, than that when I could just, you know, figure that out later but it is what it is man it's your boy black Trey, man let me know what you guys think about this very exciting news i didn't expect this much information to come out but man this is great man um final fantasy 7 is my favorite game of all time i just platinum the um <laughs> like like the original the og like i had beat it mad times but there were certain things that i never did and i think it was just like one trophy that was just sitting that i never even thought to do um, which was like get like maximum money so i just did it the other day but it's what it is man holla at your boy man it's your boy black trey holla man we out